Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Behind the Voices with Derek Stephen Prince. And now, the guest for today, Dino Andrade. Can you see and hear me? Do -do. Hello, hello, hello. Uh oh. Hopefully you can. His voice is gone. What? Oh no! <laughs> what? That's not supposed to happen now. All right, there we go. Okay, everybody can see you okay. and hear you. We are good. I'm we are good to go. Okay. So you are you Mark. are uh, you're visiting us today from your home studio, are you not? I am indeed. I am indeed. Ye oldie booth is directly behind me. Now, did did you have that before we got into this whole pandemic? Or yes, okay, yes, yes. Actually, I did. Um, uh, I had left the business for uh, for a little while, okay. and when I came back, the uh, rather than going immediately into you know working as an, an actor or anything, I actually spent some time. Uh, producing demos is that uh, right and this was yes and this was uh at the recommendation of the great bob bergen uh and shut the front so door I, I yes and so i built myself uh this whole booth and you know and built this entire rig so by hand I, yourself I had this pro yes wow. yes so i have a i have a, I have a, I have a small little uh, a little bit of amateur carpenter in me mm -hmm. uh that came from my great grandfather who did a lot of carpentry and woodwork and i used to noodle around in his workshop so i kind of picked it yeah. up uh and so yes i built this whole thing uh and and rigged it all up and so i had so i just happened to have it you know uh and it, and it was great yeah you because know, because anytime a situation came up where uh, a job needed to be done from home, I've always been able to do it. Uh, in fact, there was a job that Connor did for a movie, which uh, I, I, I believe it's been internationally released, a movie called uh, Salma's Big Wish, I believe it is, Salma's Big Wish. And there's a character in it where Connor plays the young version of one of the lead characters. And they needed to re-record some lines and we could not get him to Burbank. Mm. And so those lines were recorded here and then we wound up re-recording in Burbank, and they 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 realized it was it was kind of pointless because they couldn't tell the difference between what he recorded here and what he was recording there. That's awesome. So <laughs> that's that's the best that's the best credit. So so yeah yeah so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and and when I when I did Batman Arkham Asylum, they didn't separate the tracks when they did the Game of the Year trailer. Uh, and so they had me re-record my dialogue for the trailer and that was done here. Okay. So, so yeah, so it, 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 it actually, you know, it was, it was all in place when, uh, when all of this happened. That's awesome. So that is so awesome. Um, and Bob, I, I, I have, I'm very fond of, he was actually my mentor in getting into the voiceover industry. So. Yeah. Yep, yep. I consider him very much a mentor as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. I love classes. They meant the world to me. That, meant the world to that me. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, when I, in fact, when I did, when I, when I worked on uh, the new Looney Tunes, um, I got to work side by side with Bob, and that was just a dream come Yay! true. <laughs> That's so awesome. It really was. Yeah. So you guys all worked. To, uh, you guys did the original stuff as a group all together. Yes. yes oh my gosh. Yes, so who else was there with you guys? Oh, like, oh, I see John Kassir was there. And of course, Bob, and it just, I, it was, it was a whole room full yeah. of folks. It just, it was, it was amazing. And, and we were being directed by uh, Colette Sunderman and, and it was, it was, it was marvelous. It was really a, a great experience. That is so awesome. Great. Experience. Now, but it was just for me just amazing to be you know working side by side with Bob. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, did you get that through your agent or did you get that by yourself? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, that was through the agent. Okay. Through awesome, the awesome, agent. awesome. So I I always ask this to all of my guests. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so this is where we will kind of get into what you and I were talking about off camera. Um, everybody has an origin story, mm -hmm. right? And right, um, yeah. I know for you specifically, uh, it, it had a lot to do with your with your first wife. Um, so uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us, because I'm sure no, a, a lot of the fans no, here would love to hear that. Um, just sure. the origin of Dino Andrade as an actor slash voice actor, <laughs> um, and and be, especially with where your family came from. I I mean, you know, <laughs> I know that probably wasn't the first thing on the list that they wanted for you. No, right? <laughs> no, it was, no, no. I was very much. I was very much the oddball of the family. Uh, my father. Uh, my father was a veteran. Uh, my mother uh, came from a family of migrant farmers. Uh, and, and so it was all very much about either, you know, labor or service. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have family members who, you know, went on to be, you know, nurses, educators, and so on. Uh, but my cousin Emiliano, who is a musician and sculptor, and I, you know, the actor, we, we were the two oddballs in the family. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we were the oddballs. And, and where it all started for me, funny enough, um, I, I love saying this line because it surprises people, was in high heels. <laughs> okay. Let me explain that story. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, I was what was called a Foley walker. Uh, and I don't know if you know what that is, but a Foley walker is a person oh, yeah, who yeah, adds yeah, yeah, yeah. sound effect to right. picture. Exactly. And I, I, was, I was working on a film uh, called House with uh, William Catt and Richard Mall. It was a horror film made in uh, uh, the mid-1980s. Mid okay. And uh, we had this, this, this giant box. It was full of shoes. We changed shoes to, to match the footsteps of people. And there's, this, uh, there's a sequence in the movie with this blonde uh, in a bikini walking around in this backyard. And I'm the one in the heels doing her footsteps. <laughs> uh... and, and, uh, and when they changed reels, they were changing reels, they went to this, uh, uh, this character that they called... Uh, in the movie, was credited as the little critter. It was uh, this little creature that Felix Silla, uh, Silva, I can't remember, was in the suit. And this character was laughing. And they didn't have a voice for that. And the director, Steve Miner, you know, realized he didn't have a voice. And I just piped up. I just said, <laughs> and, and Miner was like, um, okay, uh, you in the heels. <laughs> Do that again. And that's where my voiceover career was born. Wow. I started doing, I did a lot of monster creatures and background voices and walla groups. And I started working my way up in the area of voiceover. And, and then I, I decided to shift from actor, uh, mainly because I was discouraged. Because at the same time I was doing voiceover, I was also doing on camera. Mm. And a lot of the on-camera work that I was doing, that I was constantly being offered, was, you know, being Mexican-American was just one Mexican gangbanger after another. Yeah. And I was finding that very, very discouraging throughout the 80s. And I, what I really wanted, I, I wanted to make that transition into writing and filmmaking. And so I, I, I stopped being an actor. Uh, even though I was moving my way on up, I stopped being an actor and, and shifted into independent filmmaking. And that's when I met um, the woman who would become my wife, uh, which was uh, Mary Kay Bergman, who was at the time just starting out in her voiceover career. And uh, she had just done a couple of commercials. Uh, she, was, she was working for one of the major department stores, uh, I don't know, Montgomery Ward or, you know, I forgot which one it was, Robinson's May Company, one of these. And she was working her way on up, and I was trying to, you know, make it as an independent filmmaker. Uh, she got uh, the voice of Snow White for the Snow White book and tape for uh, the Disney company, and she um, uh, told her boss she needed time off to go record this, and the boss wouldn't let her go. Mm. And basically, you know, it's like either this thing for Disney or your job. Wow. And she just said bye, wow. and she never looked wow. back. She never looked back. Uh, and I got to watch her career blossom from someone who'd only done a few radio commercials to the great Mary Kay Bergman, who had done some, uh, you know, 20 animated series, 30 features, 
you know, she went on to create the female voices for uh, almost every female voice in South Park. She was the voice of Daphne for Scooby-Doo. She had just done tons of, she did the yodeling for Jessie the Cowgirl in Toy Story 2. Uh, she, she had done tons and tons of stuff. Um, unfortunately, uh, for those who don't know, she also had a uh, serious struggle with bipolar manic depression. And it was just getting worse and worse. Uh, and she was doing everything she could to battle it. Um, and unfortunately, she lost that battle. And on November 11th, 1999, she took her own life. Uh, and that was just this, you know, it was this nightmare, uh, you know, whole world just, just up and changed. Um, I was pretty much non-functional for about five years. Um, and when I finally started to come out of my shell uh, and, and decided I wanted to go back to the business, one of the things that stuck in my head was how for the 10 year period, you know, we were together for 12 years of the last 10 as husband and wife, but for those 10 years uh, before she died, um, she saw my struggles trying to be a filmmaker, which there's so much of just trying to find money and business deals and all these other things, and it was creatively killing me. And the thing she wanted me to do over and over, she always wanted me to do over and over, was go back to being an actor. She, you know, every time we did anything that involved any kind of performing, she could see that I was always happiest as a performer. And those words really struck. And, and I, uh, so I kind of started to make my way back toward the business. Uh, and it all kind of shifted with a show, it was an anime show called Saint Tail. And I had heard that they were looking, there was, a, there was a show called Vampire Princess that I heard that they were looking for anime writers. And I called a number that I was given that I thought was to the producers of Vampire Princess to talk to them about being a writer, talking about my background in writing. And when I called up, I reached the producer of what turns out to be St. Tail, who when they answered the phone said, are you the one calling for the phone audition? <laughs> it was a sign. And I it said, was a sign. And I said, <laughs> I it was like, okay. And I, I said, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so we improvised an audition because I said, I have no sides. Right. We improvised an audition and uh, I, I, I was hired. So I got this job uh, and it was like, okay, I get yeah. it. I hear yeah. you. You know, my redheaded angel, I, I got the message. And that's when I got back into taking classes with uh, Susan Blue, mm. with Bob Bergen, mm. with, you know, all of these folks. Yeah. Uh, and, and decided, you know, she was right. I was happiest as I, you know, I spent 10 years trying my best uh, as a filmmaker and just dying inside. And yes, I was always happy. She was absolutely right. My, my own, my one... Well, not that I don't have any regrets of losing my wife, but, but one of the great regrets that I have is that she didn't live to see that she was right and that I, I would blossom going back. Because I was an actor all through high school. I was an actor in what little college I had. Right. I was acting in whatever little short films that friends were making. I was always doing voices, you know, and I would be hanging out with her and all of her friends were all these top dogs in, in, in voiceover uh, and, and I didn't want to be doing voices because I didn't want to be that guy. I was like, I can do voices too. Right. You know? So I, I just, I, so, so uh, I didn't want to do that. But she was right. This was where I belonged. She was absolutely right. So, you know, there I go. There, there I was starting in, in front of a mic in high heels, doing creature noises. <laughs> and now there I am back again in front of a mic, but without right, the heels. Right, right. <laughs> um, so that's, that's what we you know, so she was she was my chief inspiration. She was the one I looked up to the most. Um, you know, uh, she 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 was you know, my idol, and and I consider today still my guardian angel, especially my sons. Um, you know, she was she she was it for me, and she she was right. 
you know, uh, and I would like to say, because I, I cannot, you know, skip this, that um, one of the reasons why she didn't make it is because she didn't believe anyone would understand what she was going through and didn't understand, didn't, didn't think anyone would understand what, how she was suffering, the mental pain that, that she was in. And she was wrong. There are those who would have done anything to help. So if you are out there in that same situation, if you are suffering from depression, uh, anxiety, you know, all, all, if, you're, if you are suffering in silence and don't believe anyone can help, do not make the mistake my wife made. Reach out, seek help. There are those who want to help you. There are, you can find numbers online. There's a whole list of them that you can find in Wikipedia. I post them every year on the anniversary of her passing. Um, find help. There are those who believe that by ending their lives, they're ending their pain. They're not. They're just passing the pain onto those who love them most. And I will have to live with that pain for the rest of my life. So please, please, please this world is better with you than without you thank you dino i just had to say uh, that thank you thank you thank you so um I, I i don't remember when you actually created it but um I, for those of you guys who don't know Oh, wait, you know what? Before I even ask you that question, I have to ask you this because I was doing a little bit of research sure. on you. And I don't know if this is true sure. or not, but okay. apparently on IMDb, uh, it has you listed as a production assistant for the ABC after school specials. Is that correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> Tell me about yes. that. Yes, that is true. <laughs> it is true. I was a production assistant. I was actually on the transportation. Oh, crew really? Okay. For uh, yeah, I, 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 one of the side jobs that I had because I did pretty much everything. I worked as a, I worked as a grip. I worked as a, <laughs> I did. Uh, I worked on apartment crews. I mean, I wanted to be in this business yeah. more than anything. Uh, when I turned eighteen, I, I moved to Los Angeles and said, "This is where I want to be. Right. This is home." I wanted to be in the I got my fingers into everything. Uh, I started Patrol, and this is the, this is, I created this company called the Rap Patrol that was launched on this day, 34 years really? ago. Go uh, uh, music video sets primarily, because that's when it was exploding, and we would strike all the sets, the lighting, the grip gear, and so on, and send everybody, you know, home, and we took care of all of that. Uh, and that company lasted for a long, long time, I wound up selling it. And yes, today is the actual anniversary of that company. I transportation, and I worked transportation on uh, three things. It was a film called Mortuary Academy, uh, a movie called uh, um, Killbots that was renamed Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall, right. And then, uh, and then on an ABC after school special called The Day My Kid Went Punk. And uh, I was one of the lead transportation people on that because that special was shot in the San Bernardino Mountains. And I, I grew up uh, off of uh, Norton Air Force Base. In fact, I was born on Norton Air Force oh, Base wow. in San Bernardino. And so I knew where it yeah, was. Yeah, I knew yeah. where the location was. That's funny. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, so I did that. So I, I, I've had my fingers in a right. little bit of everything. So uh, it wasn't surprising that I, you know, took a hand at filmmaking, you know, along with the acting. So on. this is the entertainment industry has just been in my blood right. since you know day But night. there's another website that you did not do anything with that you're still a part of, and uh, I don't know if you're considered the web yes. master or well, web creator, obviously. Um, but uh, for those of you guys who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually really, really, really popular right now. Since COVID, the number of people that have actually been on this type of website has increased dramatically, uh, according to the percentages, at least from what I've heard on news and stuff. But Dino is a creator of his own dating website. 
Yes, yes. Um, I, I created the website soulgeek.com, like as in soulmate, but soulgeek, because I have been uh, a, a fanatical fan of all things science fiction, horror, and fantasy all my life. Uh, all my life, and it was one of the things that uh, that, that bonded me in, in many relationships, including Mary Kay. Uh, in fact, one of our ve our very first date to a movie was uh, uh, to see a screening of the movie Aliens, oh, the James no! Cameron. Film. Yes, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, and 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 so uh, so yeah, we we were always huge huge fans. I've always been a huge huge fan. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, and I love a lot of very old school stuff. I mean, uh, the Twilight Zone, the books of Ray Bradbury. I was actually born September sixteenth, nineteen sixty three, the very day The Outer Limits <laughs> premiered on television. The actual day. Uh, I am a Star Trek fanatic. Give me all the Trek you can hand me. I'll I'll yep. eat it all up with a spoon. Uh, I love Star Trek. Um, uh, it, it's something that I, I really, really bonded over. Um, when I was starting to come out of my funk after losing Mary Kay after four or five years, I ran into, of all people, my old high school sweetheart, um, this gal by the name of Casey. We had not seen each other in 26 years. Uh, we were high school sweethearts. She used to draw the Enterprise on her notebook. That's how I noticed <laughs> her in high school. And we ran into each other uh, at a party, and we discovered that the, the spark was still there. Uh, and we eventually found ourselves back together. And, and again, we were, right. we were big geeks. You know, uh, again, much like Mary Kay and I, Mary Kay and I used to go to Star Trek conventions. We collected uh, animation cells. We collected film scores. We had Starfleet <laughs> uniforms, uh, you know, and and Casey was just as nuts. We would go to San Diego Comic-Con, We would, you know, all of these things. And uh, it was the two of us who cooked up the idea for SoulGeek.com because we were at a Battlestar Galactica event where Bear McCreary and the orchestra were doing, playing live the score to the second season of Galactica. And she bought this for me as a present, the tickets. And we were there, and there was a young geek who saw the two of us holding hands who had said, you know, I, 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 who said, I, I hope I could find someone, you know, too. Because I had looked at them and I said, I'm sorry, I hope we're not too right. all googly-eyed right. for you and you're making you sick. <laughs> and, and that was when we started thinking there needs to be something. There needed to be something. And it just seemed like a beautiful way to make something good come out of tragedy. So I hired people to construct the site because I know <laughs> nothing about computers. <laughs> nothing. I'm that guy that has problems with the computer that I call tech support and tech support says, wow, I've never seen that problem before. I don't know what it, you know, but so I had people build it for me. And the whole idea really was to make something good come out of tragedy because here I am this guy who had this wonderful geek in my life for 12 years. I lost her six years later. I'm in love again with another mm -hmm. geek. And here I am, this guy who was widowed in his 30s, and yet I feel like a lucky man, and yet there's people out there who haven't found anybody. And I thought, what a wonderful testament to the memory of Mary Kay. And it was my hope that, you know, someday that there would be a child in the world watching, like, Beauty and the Beast or, or Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island and hearing Mary Kay's voice and not knowing that they're in this world because their parents found each other on SoulGeek.com. And that actually yeah. happened. And uh, the first Soul Geek child was born in Columbus, Ohio. I flew to Columbus to meet the couple. Uh, it was just this wonderful, you know, moment of, of, of life coming where before mm. life had ended. And, and that's, that's really what the site is all about, what it's all about. Um, you know, we are a mom and pop operation. You know, we operate on a shoestring. The site is 100% free. Um, you know, we've had corporate sponsors wanting to try and take over the site. And it's like, you know, yeah. that's not what it's about. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll admit, I'll be one of the first to admit, it is rough around the edges. But, you know, it, it's because it's, it's, it's just a bunch of geeks trying to make it work. And we've been responsible for couples all over the globe. And we found that out when we had, after the first year of operation, 
we said we're gonna go to the Star Trek Hilton in Las Vegas to Quark's Bar, <laughs> uh, and we're gonna have a little Soul Geek meetup in Las Vegas for Valentine's Day weekend. And we didn't. We went there, and we didn't know if anybody would show up. Uh, there was a couple of members on the site who said they would organize it all. Uh, and uh, Casey and I, we drove to to Las Vegas. We went to Quark's Bar, and we were shocked by this crowd of couples who had come from all over, some as far wow. as Japan. Uh, it was, it was, and they were all, and and we had just said yeah. Soul Geeks come together. What they had organized secretly without me knowing was they organized couples who had found each other who came to Vegas, who essentially oh, came wow. to say thank you. That's awesome. And, uh-oh. I'm here. Hello, are you there? Uh, hello, hello, hello. 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 Hi. Are, are you, <laughs> I, I can see can you. you see yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Yeah. No. Suddenly, it oh, suddenly no. said poor connection. Okay. Yeah. So you know, long story short, it was it was just one of those things that was it was staggering. I I, I had no idea that the site had been working. We didn't expect to see all of these couples who came to say, you know, thanks. I went back to my hotel room that night Aww. and bawled like a baby. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, that was this was built. In, it was built entirely. If you go to the site and you click on Story of Soul Geek, you'll see that the site is dedicated to Mary Kay. And as far as I'm concerned, every couple we bring together and have brought together is now part of Mary Kay's legacy. And I think that's yeah. a pretty damn good legacy. Absolutely. Um, so Ben, I know that you are, uh, currently watching. You had the question yesterday about how Lauren and I met. Um, so thanks to this gentleman and his website, that's how we met. <laughs> uh, which I did right. not know until I exactly. came on here today. And that exactly. was a wonderful surprise. <laughs> and thank, you. thank you. So, um, it must have been for you as a Trekkie, um, a dream come another dream come true you've had a lot of dreams come true um but this must have been like another dream come true for you when you were able to actually uh get cast for the uh star trek online game yes 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 i was yeah. absolutely thrilled absolutely thrilled to work <laughs> on star trek online and it was it was great we we had we had gone to the 50th anniversary concert at the uh the pantages and they had a moment in there where, <clears throat> where uh, they said, anybody who's actually involved in Star Trek, please stand up. And a bunch of people stood up. And a friend of mine ha who was sitting behind us whacked me on the head and said, <laughs> stand up. <laughs> because I wasn't thinking of the online show. I'm thinking of all the movies and shows, yeah. you know. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was an absolute thrill. Ab absolute thrill. And every time they've called and said, hey, we got more, I'm like, yeah, when that's where? awesome. You know, that's awesome. I'm all over it. And all um, over it. Yeah. Uh, as far as the uh, Scarecrow, which is obviously one of your, your more yeah. memorable roles for the for the people that play a lot of games uh, for all the Arkham Batman games. Um, was that through your agent as well? How did that happen? OK. Yes, yes that was through that was through the agent. Uh, uh, I, I was primarily asked to read for Scarecrow, Zaz, uh, mm. and Joker. And, uh, and of course, you know, the Joker is kind of like the Holy Grail yeah, of, right. you know, villains. And, and I had really wanted that. And when I got the call that I had gotten Arkham Asylum, uh, I wondered, was, was, was it the Joker? And said, no, no, it, it, they did get Mark Hamill. And I was like, I lost the Joker <laughs> to Mark Hamill. Right, you know, no <laughs> right. shame there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it's like, like you got the scarecrow. It's like, okay, cool. Not knowing how cool the scarecrow would wind up being, it was, yeah. it was, it was an amazing role, absolutely amazing role. And again, directed by Colin oh. Sunderman. So, you know, another one of those things where it's like, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You know. uh, for those of you guys who don't know Colette Sunderman, uh, she is, well, is she still casting? No, I think she retired, didn't she? Oh, do you? Uh, okay. I see her all the time. She just she just directed my son on Star Trek Maximum there Venom. You go. So, all right. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, since um, 
since that has now come up, why don't you go grab Connor and we'll bring him in. Uh, I'll ask him a couple of questions, then we'll, then we'll open it up to everybody else. Sure, Connor! Sure, Connor! <laughs> Come on in here. Connor! How you doing? How you doing, buddy? Good. Good, good, good. good. How are you doing today? You having a good day so far? Well, I hope. Yeah. Well, I watch the show and some awesome. video games. Well, um, there's a lot of people that are uh, uh, on this stream right now, and they are fans of both your dad and you. So, there you go. You have fans. You have you fans. You have fans. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, I want to hear, I've already heard your dad's version. I want to hear your version of how you got to become a voice actor. Well, uh, well uh, it started off um, with... Um, well, um, I. Uh, well, he started <laughs> when he was eight, so it okay. might. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, the first thing I did was this thing called Sam Sam. It was this translation okay. from French, was they were doing, and I didn't get most of it because I hadn't seen like any images from the movie because I hadn't um like, yeah. animated any of it. So, yeah, and that was the first job I did. That was the first thing that he auditioned for. But it was not the okay. first thing that he got, actually. Uh, he auditioned, well, actually, it was the first thing he got. But right after that, he auditioned for uh, the show Super Wings. And uh, he booked that and recorded that actually before oh, okay. Sam Sam. Yeah, yeah. So Super Wings was actually the very first very thing that cool. he did. Very cool. Yep, yep. And now he's a regular on, yeah? on Super Wings. That's awesome. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's this other show where I'm the main character, but I can't tell you because it hasn't come out yet. Yes, we can't tell you. But yes, he does have a, he has a starring role in a new series awesome. uh, for Cartoon Network. Uh, but we can't, uh, we can't right. talk about right, it right, yet. Right, right, right. <laughs> and there's probably like a million people watching right now, so we're yeah. not going to see Yeah, anything. that would be a good thing. You could def uh, but he's... he's been a busy little guy it, it the whole thing kind of started um back when i did uh speedy gonzalez for uh the new looney tunes and uh unfortunately uh the, the series came to an end and the episodes that uh, uh that i did as speedy uh mm. didn't air and about a year or so after um after the show had ended the director had sent me a copy of the episodes and I, I watched the episodes with Connor yeah. on my lap and it was an incredibly special moment because Connor's face just lit up when he realized <laughs> this was his dad who was doing Speedy Gonzalez. He could hear this was his dad. <laughs> and he just lit up and got excited and I got tears in my eyes. Uh, and I had asked him, I said, do you want to, do you, would you like to try, you know, doing voices? And he said that he did, and 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 so we were we were primed for it. And then just out of sheer kismet, uh, I was asked whether or not I wanted to audition for this film, Sam Sam. And the producer, uh, uh, Lauren, uh, um, uh, uh, she had said, you know, we've seen a lot of these little videos that you've put on YouTube and and on Facebook with Connor. Would Connor be interested in reading? We think he'd be great as one of the child superheroes. And so Connor auditioned uh, and, and got that. And then it was like a week after Connor did his first job for Super Wings. I mean, yeah. a week later, strange, a week later, that's when the Speedy Gonzalez wow. cartoon premiered. And it yeah. just felt like, yeah. again... Right. <laughs> there are stars aligning. Yeah. And and Connor had a Connor had a ball. Uh and then he went on this mad tear that I've never seen the like of where he booked four jobs in wow. five weeks. 
And it was just, yeah. no, son, people don't come out of the <laughs> gate doing that. And, and, and we haven't looked back and we've had, we've had so much fun as father and son working on these things. Uh, and, and currently, if you have uh, um, Disney Junior, you can hear Connor as Groot uh, on, uh, on Spider-Man Maximum Venom. And when he does the venomized version of Groot, let's, let's hear your venomized sound. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, do you want to tell him where you got that voice? Um, the Demogorgon. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yep. We watched Stranger Things, and he just started walking around imitating right. the Demogorgon. <laughs> and uh, I thought, yeah, someday you're going to wind up using that, son. That's awesome. Did. That is awesome. I I know one thing uh, for those uh, people who actually follow you on your Facebook page, where, myself included. One of the things that I love seeing posts about for you guys is when your dad gets to introduce you to new movies. Well, they're not new movies, but they're movies that he grew up watching and he introduces them to you. I wanted to find out from you, Connor, what the if you can pick like maybe your top three movies that your dad has introduced you to, what would they be? Well, it would be, oh, there's a lot of movies. We have an entire bookshelf full of movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. My yeah. collection is yeah. over a thousand. Yeah. I would say Godzilla, but there's yeah. a bunch of those. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many oh, movies. We watch so many, like, yep. every Sunday. Mm. Can't well, name two more? There's the Invisible, there's the Invisible Man and... The, the original Man, yeah, Invisible Man, one. right? Yeah, with, uh, the yes. original with yes. Claude Rains, yeah. And then there's... Did we see a Batman movie? Uh, we we were watching. We did watch uh the oh Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before yes. Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a Jack nice. Over there. If I can do no, that. No, no, <laughs> don't do that. You, yes, we have a giant Jack. There is a giant Jack Skellington statue right next to me that's oh, several wow. feet tall. That's Very outside cool. the booth, yes. Very cool. Yeah. We also we we also just finished watching. Here's is something you should remember. We just finished watching the original nice. Planet of the Apes films. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, but yeah, we watch we watch a classic yeah. movie every Sunday. Those are awesome. How did how did that start with you, Dino? Did what, did your dad do that with you, or how did you? Is it something you just found? I, you know, my dad used to take me to uh, the okay. local drive-in. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I'm I'm still here. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Uh -oh. but... Let's see if it reconnects. Hello, 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 hello. Um, uh -oh. that's not good. That's really not good. Grr. 2022. Um, uh, hmm. Yes. Can you guys? Can you guys, you guys That's can't hear me? That's number. Mm -hmm. That's our, that was our booth nope. at WonderCon. Hmm. Grr. Uh, ha, ha, ha. We're seeing and hearing you now. Okay. I don't, I'm, I, you know what? It's probably me, guys. I, I my, uh, my internet connection, even though I'm hardwired in, is uh, acting really funky. So I apologize. Ah, uh, no worries. Uh, to answer your question, my dad uh, used to take me to uh, growing up the local drive-in all the time, mm. and uh, you know he took me to all of the original Planet of the Apes films, uh, and took me to see 2001: A Space Odyssey repeatedly. Oh, no, 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 no. 
was a really good one. Yeah. Well, tell him that. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. <laughs> the ending was a bit confusing where he went over whatever. Yeah. It was. But uh, it was still a really good movie. Okay. <laughs> he liked 2001. Yeah, I, I, I thought of that as, as probably my dad's favorite film because he took me to see that the most. Mm. Uh, and I thought, well, I'm going to introduce this to Connor. I don't know if uh, I don't know if he'll get it, but let's see what happens. And he wound up really, really enjoying wow. it. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so my dad took me to the drive-in. Uh, he took me to the drive-in a lot, mm. uh, a, a lot. Uh, and, and I watched an awful lot of films with him on television, uh, mostly science fiction. Uh, as opposed to my mother, my mother, on the other hand, liked um, what she called spooky movies. Oh. Uh, she liked she liked horror films. Okay. Uh, she liked especially vampire movies. Uh -huh. So my dad, <laughs> on the other hand, didn't really care for for horror. So I got you know science fiction for my dad and horror for my mom. <laughs> and then growing up, um, I, I, because I grew up you know in the in the late sixties, early seventies, I didn't have the internet, and all I had was you know famous monsters of Filmland magazine. And so you got the TV guide every week and circled anything that was sci-fi, horror, and fantasy, and you watched it when it was on or you missed it. So right. I had to pretty much watch everything. And what I found uh, in you know more modern times, uh, more and more young people just not watching old classic stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like if the special effects were pre-Jurassic Park, they didn't want to see right. it. And I thought, I don't want that to happen to my son. I want him to understand that before you know photorealistic special effects there's always it's always about great storytelling yes. it's about it's about you know it, it's about telling an awesome 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 tale yeah. and so and so i wanted to show connor all these old classic films so we started i mean in the silent era we're watching metropolis nosferatu uh, I just got a copy, in fact, of uh, uh, the silent film Faust. Oh wow! Um, you know, we were watching you know, we're watching old Harryhausen films and fifties monster movies and all the Universal classics. Uh, uh, you know, it, it 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 was important to me for Connor to to <laughs> get this you know, love of, of film mm -hmm. uh, of all ages, yeah. you know, whether he's watching a silent classic with Buster Keaton, you know, or, or watching a more modern, you know, film. Uh, I wanted him to have a, a, a love of all of it because, well, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's where that came from. Very, very, very cool. Well, Connor, yeah, yeah. You are one special kid for your dad introducing you to all that stuff because I wish a lot of the kids these days knew as much as you know about older films and entertainment industry and all that stuff. It's, it's awesome. So, all right. I am going to, hey, Mr. Connor, you have a question. Yeah, um, the phone I saw over there, uh, we have a phone over there, and when I saw it out of the corner of my eye, it looked like a Dalek. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Like the dots hey, yes, <laughs> our phone looks like the dots on the Dalek. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, we still have a landline <laughs> and cell phones. Yes. Because we can't get my mother to call the cell phone, so... Anyway, you have a question for Kyle? Yes. Actually, this is coming from Ben, who is uh, watching you guys from the United Kingdom or London, England. So um, the question for you, Connor, is out of any video game or TV show, what character would you love to voice and why? Well, there's a lot of them. Okay. Well, pick one. Pick well, one. I mean, there's. I actually uh, saw like a bunch of things for Portal, and I really like Portal now. Especially the concept of just the original concept of a portal gun is just like a that you one go through one portal, come out the other. Wow. Yeah. And both, people have been really surprised when they first got Portal, but anyway, I can do a voice that kind of sounds like Gladys. Hello, and welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. 
<laughs> so you would want to be a child version of GLaDOS. Yes. There you yeah, go. Nice. Nice. That is so cool. <laughs> All right. I'm going to scroll through here really quick, guys. And, um, uh, oh, here's a question for you, Dino. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, both of you guys can probably answer this. Both of us. Okay. But yeah. I know this is mainly geared towards you. This is also from another viewer in uh, you, the UK. Vanessa is asking, What's, Hello, Vanessa. what Star Trek series is your favorite? Uh, <laughs> the, I grew up with the original series. Uh, yep. And the original series will always be my favorite. Okay. Me too, actually. Did you hear that? Yeah. He That's said, awesome. He, he said, I watched the original series, but he had a mom dad. He's actually wa me. he's actually watched the original series three times. Okay. He he uh, and the the Blu-ray discs have uh, where they've got the uh, the original effects and then the new digital effects, and he actually requested to watch it with the original effects because he wanted to see it the way I did. Okay, very cool. Which so. And when I was little. Um, we watched the original Star Trek because the red shirts, the the red shirts, the um, yellow handlebars, the blue and green buttons, all that is colors. And when I was three, that was really fascinating. Yeah, that's so cool. And you didn't really, yeah, and I think the first thing I actually saw was Fantasia because when I was little, every night I'd turn on like either. Uh, you turn on like Fantasia or Wally -E as yeah. a movie I'd watch. You would you would go to sleep to Fantasia or Wally. -E. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. But I, I the, the original series uh, will always be my favorite. But I I have a fondness for all of them. I'm I'm a huge fan of Deep Space Nine. Uh, I love what they've been doing with Discovery. Discovery season two just put a huge smile on my face. Mm. I uh, got a big kick out of Picard. I'm really looking forward to Lower Decks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a big, big fan. But yeah, for me, it all started with uh, with the original series. I kind of want to see what the uh, one up for uh, Nickelodeon is going to be. Yep, uh, there's a, there supposedly one is being produced for Nickelodeon. Oh, really? We'll, we'll find My out. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't see what it's about or... Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now, son. <laughs> oh, I know that. Yep, yep. I thought they already told it. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, all right. Uh, let me see what other questions we might have for you guys. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, let me see. Ha, ha, ha. Um, oh, the anticipation. I know, I know. I'm not... You know what, guys? I'm, there's a lot of chatting that I obviously missed here. So I apologize if you guys may have asked me questions before and I did not respond to them right away, um, being in conver conversation with Dino. So... Um, uh if you wanted to ask them again please do so um otherwise we shall just continue chatting du -du 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 -du. um oh here's another oh 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 i just saw it oh um so this is coming from Shara. I'm not sure that she's still... Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry, from Aaron. Um, not. Sh uh, I think he's still on with us. He wanted to know, uh, Connor, how much fun it was playing a cute tree alien in Spider-Man. Well, I mean, it was cool. When I saw the first one with Baby Girl, oh my gosh, I thought he looked so cute. And at the end of the first one, when... I mean, what was it? Yeah, I think it was the first one when uh, you just see him dancing around in the pot. I thought, oh my gosh, what are they going to do with the second one? And then the seeing his little baby, oh my gosh, it was so cute. And actually being able to play with him, uh, actually being able to play him as a character, and being able to do the... 
at the same time, it's just, it was just so cool. They even have a shirt that I have in my room. Um, should I get it? Or... No, you, you stay right here. You stay right here. <laughs> yes, we had, we had a Groot shirt that, that we bought that he wore at the sessions. How long ago were the, uh, when he started that, how long ago was that? That was quite a while ago. So it was quite a while ago. It was like 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 close to a year mm -hmm. for the first sessions, and and then the last sessions were only a few months before the broadcast. Okay. So did did uh, did you have uh, Connor? Did you have a chance to meet Mister Mister Lee? Was uh, he was he no. around then? No. I don't think so. um me. No. Okay. No, he he did not get to meet Stanley. No. Okay. Okay. Did you have you ever met any of the cast members from Star Trek? Either of you guys? Yes. Yeah? Yep. Who? I, I met Captain Kirk once and I was just like <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, I have a picture of him with Bill Shatner. Oh, wow. That's and, awesome. And and it was it was it was great cuz 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 Shatner's got this look on his yeah. face like <laughs> there's a child crawling on me. Somebody do something about this child crawling on me. And whereas <laughs> Connor, on the other hand, had this look on his face like, I've got my arm around Captain Kirk. And, and it's, it's this wonderful uh, photo. I don't know if you have a website for this. I can send you the photo. But it's it's hilarious because Shatner's just like, oh, God. And, and God is, I'm with Captain Kirk. I'm, and I could see that in his eyes. I could see when, when, we, when, when he met him, it was like he wasn't. He it was like he wasn't getting that I'm meeting William Shatner, the actor. He was like, I am meeting Captain Kirk, and he was just so excited. And the, the photo is just one of the most precious things in the world. He's just all yeah, so thrilled. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's but we, awesome. But we've met a we've met a whole bunch. Another one who who took a real shine to Connor and gave him toys and things, which is amazing. Was uh, was Brent Spiner? Oh wow, uh, very and, cool. And, Brent Brent was a real sweetheart and had a uh, got a kick out of got a kick out of meeting him. Can, can I show you, can I show you the, 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 the Oh, go ahead, go get it, go get it, go get it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and I've I, I've met tons and tons of the the Star Trek actors, and I I always become this giddy little fanboy anytime I meet any of right. them. Right. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Uh, uh, here, here it is. This is this is what Brent Spiner gave gave Connor. Oh wow, it, that's so cool! Yeah, that's awesome. He, he gave him a data. Yeah, very very cool. So, yep, I actually have a uh, I have a chronological list of all of Star Trek, all the movies, all the shows in timeline order, not broadcast order. So it's the actual Star Trek timeline okay. order. That encompasses all shows, all movies, and we watch at least one episode with breakfast every day. Oh wow, that's so cool! Or a movie if it happens to come. Right, up. right, right. And we also have in the included in the mix is the Futurama episode where no fan has gone before, <laughs> and the movie Galaxy Quest. Oh wow! So, but and we it took us several years, but we finally finished the entire viewing list. And because he enjoyed it so much, he wanted us to start all over yeah. again. So we've started all over again. So we are right now 12 episodes into Enterprise as we're beginning the whole thing. And it's probably going to take us several years to get through it again. Right. Well, I mean, there are some episodes of, Star of the original series that I couldn't see. So I haven't seen all of it yet. That's true. There are episodes I thought, you know what? You're a little too young for yeah. that. But now, now you'll what get to they? see them. Uh, I'll see. Well, there's Wolf in the Fold. There's uh, well, anyway, there's 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 a few that were like, yeah, I don't know about this being the right time for Connor right now. Uh, but but uh, but we'll get around to them Since eventually. That was like five or six or four. We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get around to yeah. them. Yeah. So it's it's very much a family thing for That's us. That's awesome. That is very very awesome. Did you have another question? Um, I uh, you know what? I can't remember what it was, but um. Let me see if I can find it. Um, one of the fans is just saying that you're a really cool kid, Connor. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, whoever that is. And if you know memes, um, you probably love me too. Thank you, random citizen. <laughs> um, let me see. You know what? I do have a really important question for you, Connor. This is from one of the viewers. 
It's probably one of the most important questions that you will ever get. Yes? What is your favorite sandwich? Uh, grilled cheese or like I think grilled, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. You can't go wrong with it's, grilled cheese. It's what he had before this. <laughs> you cannot go wrong with grilled cheese, ever. <laughs> Do you have a favorite type of cheese for your grilled cheese? Mm, well, I, well, I mean, not for. Well, for grilled cheese, what cheese do you use? Because for me, it's just the square. You like it's cheddar the, on the grilled cheese. It's the, and then all the homemade tacos I like to make because it's my favorite. Thing. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I use uh, shredded mozzarella. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Which is not typical for a taco, but it's what we like. For me, it's um, the orange, squ- the flat orange squares that are kept in the little, like, um, flat packages. That's the cheddar. Okay. All right. Have you ever had grilled cheese with pickles in the middle? (laughs) I'll take that as a no. Not a pickle fan. Not a pickle fan. (laughs) He used to be. When he was really little, he would munch on pickles all the time. Right. Now he doesn't want anything to do with them. Because um, because something happened in... Well, yes, you 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 uh, you were eating pickles in a car on our way to a friend's house when you were little, and you barfed them all up, and we had to pull over and clean the car, and and run into a store and buy you a new onesie before we got there, and you've not eaten pickles since. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that is so cool. Born in 2010, by the way. <laughs> all right, I have a last question for you, Mr. Connor. Are you ready for it? Yeah. And this is yes. this is this is a pretty cool question too. So you're gonna have to spend some time thinking about this one. This is also coming from Ben from from the UK. If you have to fight one of these, what would you choose? A shark with legs and arms, or a bear with boxing gloves on, and why? Um. A bear with boxing gloves on because we could befriend the bear, ride the bear, and we could go and fight the armed leg shark. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Question answered. <laughs> in, in a lot less time than I would have, I was like, ah. <laughs> um, Surprise. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what? That's what happens when there's no filters. You know, it's just boom. <laughs> yep. Well, guys, um, I do see the time. I want to respect it because I know that you had stuff that you had to do and uh, get ready for as far as the rest of the day slash evening goes. So um, I cannot thank you both enough for being on this show. Um, Since I've been chatting with you through Messenger Dino off and on, um, uh, one of the reasons that I started doing these types of streams is because, especially with everything that's going on right now, the lockdowns, COVID, all that, and people not being able to see favorite voice actors at conventions, this is the next best thing for them mm-hmm. um, to for us to be able to, you know, stay connected and stay in touch. So I cannot thank you both enough for um, being a part of the show today. Um, and uh, Connor, thank you for all of your words of wisdom. Dino, thank you for sharing all of your fantastic stories. Um, uh, you and I can talk later, but uh, there's some stuff that came in um, that I can share with you uh, in terms of oh, some of the stories that you, uh, sure. that you shared. Um, okay, but uh, sure. if you guys have any last words to say for everybody watching you, now's the time to go ahead and say it before we wrap things up. Connor, did you want to tell everybody anything? Uh, no, I just have something I'm going to say before I leave. I'm just going to say Sure. This. Hello, and I hope you learned some useful information from this interview. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Connor. And if I could leave you with anything, um, obviously I've been through some, some stuff in my life. 
uh, that, you know, some people might say, you know, I, I don't know how you could survive something like that. But if you see me and my son, uh, you know, um, life is good. Yeah. And this is this was what was worth hanging in there for. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, it, it really is. I'm despite the tragedy and stuff that I've been through, I am truly a happy man. Yeah. Truly a happy man. I feel I feel quite 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 blessed to have my son and to be now sharing this career with him absolutely you know yeah so and any any time i've ever run into you 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 always have a smile on your face you always have you know uh good humor um there's a lot of people on here man <sighs> who care about you a lot and um, if there's a way that they can reach out to you, uh, what's the best way to do that? Well, uh, the usual uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm spending more time on Instagram these days as there's just so much vitriol going on on Facebook right now uh, that I just, I, I, I just don't even want to... You know, I, I, it's, it's why I'm not on there. Uh, I'm not. I'm not on Facebook a lot anymore, except for the, the occasional posts I'm making about Connor. Uh, but uh, but yeah, through through things like through things like like uh, Instagram and Twitter are good. Um, it, it's sometimes hard for me to really connect um, with fans only because things like like when Arkham Asylum happened. It became this flood of, you know, gamers who all wanted to be friended and it just became this 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 pile of noise. And it's kind of hard to cut through all of that, you know. Uh, but, you know, those are, the, those are the places. And it's just me, Dino Andrade, uh, you know, on, on Instagram, on Twitter, on, on Facebook. And I, I, I try to keep an eye on those things. Although, again, honestly, not as often on, on Facebook, um, you know, until all of this dies down sure uh uh but but yeah i'm, I'm on instagram a lot and so yeah, those, those 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 would be good places um you know I, I i'm not i'm not out there in the public a lot uh because of the fact that i am a, a somewhat disastered person i'm very close to my family i take uh my I take my, my, my time with my family very, very seriously. I, I mean, I used to think that, you know, I, I came out here when I, was, when I was 18, right after I graduated high school, I came out here. I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. I wanted to be an actor, a filmmaker, a writer. I said, this is what I was born to do. This is what I was part, meant to be part of. Mary Kay knew I was meant to be an actor and, and so on. And then when I got back into it and started booking things, and when I got things like Arkham and so on, I said, yes, this is what I meant to do. And, and my son kind of proved all that wrong that that no being an actor is just something i happen to be good at or you know relatively okay at you know <laughs> uh, uh i'm you know uh being a father is what i was meant to be and and that means more to me than anything now you know so that's 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 really what it's all about yeah that's awesome that's awesome you are awesome sir um, all right. Well, with that, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Please, please, please be good humans. Uh, we will see you on Friday when we are back with Gaming with the Prince. And until then, keep your feet on the ground or reach for the stars. Mwah. Love you all. Every time. Thank you, Dino. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.